Hello everyone, my name is Camille Carneiro. I am currently a postdoctoral researcher at the South Iceland Research Center. And during this talk, I will try to show you if wimbrel chicks are at any point limited by the food that they can find in Iceland. Among the numerous effects of um, climate change are trophic mismatches. I'm sure we heard about them earlier in the conference and they essentially happen when resources and consumers respond at different paces to the warming temperatures. That leads to an asynchrony in timings, which can have detrimental effects on uh, breeding outputs and on chick growth rates. But I think that this needs to be um, studied together with another important aspect, which is the minimum threshold that chicks actually require to uh, achieve a normal growth rate. For example, if we consider this situation here and we assume a high threshold like this one uh, marked in the blue dashed line, in this situation only the very early birds would find enough resources. But if the threshold is much lower, um, then a higher proportion of the population would find enough resources for their demands. Again, under the exact same um, asynchrony between resources and consumers, but just in a situation where resources are overly abundant, um, that would mean that actually all of the birds in the population would find enough resources. We also heard earlier in the conference um, during my test talk that there is some evidence for a population decline in Icelandic wimbles. And if we want to start studying how food resources or how wimbles might respond to variation in food resources given uh, climate change, I think it's important to start at the baseline and start by, by trying to figure out where is this threshold and if wimbled chicks can be at any point actually limited by the food that they find in Iceland. To do that, we need obviously chick growth data, which we obtain by measuring the chicks. But we also need food abundance data, which we collected by using pitfall and window traps in order to collect data on both crawling and flying invertebrates. We collected this data last year um, and we did so every three days. So every day in the field would mean catching the chicks, measuring them and emptying the traps. Three days later, we will do the same. Three days later, again, and so on until the end of the season. There is although an important aspect to consider here. Wimble chicks eat crowberries. And therefore, we need to account for the abundance of those fruits too which we did um, by measuring their abundance um, at the breeding sites. Additionally, we also collected data on chick diet, which um, is useful if we want to filter only the relevant invertebrates uh, from the pitfalls and window traps. I would like to start by showing, showing you so what um, what to wimbrels, um, what the chicks uh, consume. And here I will show you the frequency of occurrence in the bottom plot and the numerical composition of the prey um, in the top one. What we found was that in uh, about three quarters of the samples, there were remains of beetles, mostly weevils. In about the same proportion of samples, we found remains of uh, Bibioni de Diptera, as well as remains of crowberries. In just over half of the samples, there were remains of uh, Imnoptera, mostly Ichneumonid wasps, and in about a quarter of them, there were uh, remains of uh, Lepidoptera larvae. These five groups accounted actually for almost 100% uh, of the items found in all the pool samples together. And these will be the groups that we will use to link to the growth of the chicks. But before we link those two um, bits of data, 
I would like to show you how um, did these food resources vary during the breeding season. As for arthropods, we can see in the top plot how they varied. It's clear um, a peak, but that's not so much what we are interested in right now. We are interested in how much it is and how much is that available at any point for the chicks. As for crowberries, we, we found a continuous um, increase uh, in their abundance, uh, in their biomass, which is expected if we, if we just see fruits everywhere and as they develop and grow, the biomass will grow as well. So we have data on the food resources and we need to link it to the growth. So we need some growth metric here. And to get that growth metric, we used the uh, Tarsusto uh, size because it's the structure that we found growing uh, faster. We actually see it reaching the asymptote. Um, and precisely for that reason, we needed to exclude the older ages to avoid having data when the individuals are not growing anymore. We also excluded the two first days of age to avoid an effect of the resources that chicks might still have when they hatch. And then we used um, this part of the, the, the growth to calculate a three-day growth rate. If you remember, chicks were measured every three days. And this growth rate is nothing more than uh, a difference in size between the two visits divided by the size at the second visit. We then use the linear model to check how this growth rate varied in function of the arthropod biomass and the crawberry biomass. But we also took into account the age of the chicks because it is expected that younger chicks will grow faster than older ones and therefore we needed to account for that. What are the possible scenarios that we can expect? Well, I think that if the chicks might be in an environment where the food resources can at sometimes be too low uh, or lower than their threshold, then we will be likely to, to see a positive relationship between the growth rate and the biomass of food resources, where lower food resources will mean lower growth rates. But it could also be that they are in an environment plenty of food resources and therefore their growth rates will be stable and do not vary uh, in relation to the food resources. But it could also be that different food resources will have a, a different influence um, in the growth rates. And in reality, chicks might compensate the lack of one resource by um, consuming another one at any given point. But what did we actually find? Well, we actually found a positive effect of arthropod biomass on the growth rate, where lower levels of arthropod biomass meant uh, slower growth rates, whereas more biomass available meant faster growth rates. As for crawberries, we didn't find an effect of this food resource on the chicks' growth rates nor we found an effect of the interaction between these two food resources on their growth rate. As expected, we found an effect of the age of the chicks, which is quite clear if we color this by um, age groups. And we see that younger chicks represented by um, the pink and green colors tend to grow faster than older ones, here represented by blue and purple. And so I think that um, this suggests that the wimbrel chicks in Iceland might indeed sometimes be limited uh, by the arthropod biomass available. However, as I mentioned earlier, this is data from just one breeding season, which is not enough, I would say. And actually, the weather conditions were slightly colder than usual during that breeding season. Um, here I can show the temperatures for that season uh, compared to the 10 previous ones. And indeed, it was um, uh, a colder season than usual, I would say. This, of course, can affect the amount of arthropods 
and crawberries available as well as their um, timings. It can also affect the chicks time budgets. So it's something to consider in the future. And another thing to consider in the future um, is actually the sex of the chicks. We know that wimbrels sh show uh, sexual size dimorphism and such dimorphism might already be uh, found at the chick stage where for example females might go faster than males. Fortunately I will soon be again in the field and collect more data on, on all of this and that will allow to refine these analyses and possibly reach um, more solid results. But for today, that's what I had to show you. Um, I would like to say that I am happy to address any questions and to discuss any suggestions you might have. I would like to thank everyone that um, helped me in the field, as well as the funding agencies that allow for this work to be conducted, um, and everyone for listening. Thank you very much.